Hello everyone, my name is Demis Moon and this is my assistant the foot. Today we'll talk about the Sophists. The Sophists were wandering teachers in ancient Greece. The name does not denote an organized group or a school. Instead, the Sophists were independent individuals who made their name by teaching arete or excellence. This excellence encompassed things like rhetoric, philosophy, poetry, the art of disputation, mathematics and other areas. The Sophists would teach children of rich nobles for money, something that gave them a bad reputation, especially among later philosophers like Plato and Aristotle. Not only did they teach for money, but according to Plato and Aristotle, what they taught was not to use arguments in order to find truth, but merely to win an argument for the sake of winning. This reputation lasts even to this day. The name of sophistry still carries a bad connotation, signifying the art of making convincing but ultimately fallacious and misleading arguments. Now, in some regard, this reputation is not completely unwarranted. The sophists did teach to young nobles who would later participate in political and legal life of their cities, where winning an argument had precedence over the proverbial quest for truth. The most famous sophist, Protagoras, for example, argued that if two opposing claims were put forth before him, and one claim was obviously weaker than the other one, he could use arguments to make the weaker one appear stronger. So there is relativism to truth. It is relative on the ability to use argumentative strategies to make one claim win over the other one. This ties into the famous sentence of Protagoras, that man is a measure of all things. Now, some interpret this to mean that man signifies Every individual and every individual has their own measure of truth. That which is true for me is the truth. If I believe that there are no gods, then this is the truth. If I believe that there are gods, well then, this is the truth. But another interpretation is that man here does not mean single individual, but man in general, or more precisely, each society has its own truth. One community believes in one group of gods, the other in some other group of gods, and both are valid in their belief. So truth will be dependent on the community you belong to. In any case, truth is not set in stone. It is relative to a certain standpoint, whether a standpoint of a single individual if we follow the first interpretation, or that of a community if we follow the second one. The second interpretation, which focuses on social life, ties into an important theme that sophists were concerned with. They were the first to make the distinction between nomos, or law, or society on the one hand, and physis, or the natural order, on the other. Protagoras believed that nature implants in all humans a capacity for justice and shame. Without justice and shame, no society is possible. Therefore, the law of society arises from natural principles found in all human beings. But although these natural principles are universal to all humans, they differ how they manifest in social life. Justice and shame are universal, but what one society might find just or shameful will be different from what other society finds just and shameful. They will write laws according to their own sense of justice and shame. Therefore, the law of society is relative, despite having its source in universal principles natural to all humans. However, other sophists, such as Gorgias, held a different view. Not much is known about his ideas on this matter specifically, but his pupils held very unorthodox views for the time. They rejected the idea that law arises from nature, as Protagoras thought. In fact, the law of society and the natural order are antagonistic to each other. Callicles, one of his pupils, claimed that the true natural law is based on power. This is the idea of might makes right. In nature, the strong rule over the weak, so Callicles thought. The law of society is false because it forces the strong to tolerate the weak. Whereas in nature the strong prevail, the law of society allows the weak to come to power. However, another pupil of Gorgias, Lycophron, claimed the exact opposite. In his view, all humans are equal in nature. It is the law that establishes hierarchies and divisions. The distinction between nobility and commonness, which was the law of the time, or slavery, which was present in ancient Greece, are unjust from the standpoint of nature. Society is again opposed to nature, but that because the strong must tolerate the weak, but precisely the opposite, because society creates hierarchies not found in nature. So we see the conundrum, with the same question of relationship between law and nature, 
social and natural world, nomos and physis, leads to opposing and irreconcilable claims where different strategies of argumentation are applied. All of this reflects one more important thing that Protagoras also claimed, namely that on any question there are at least two sides of argument, or as in this case, more than that. Although the sophists were held in bad regard for their relativism and their selling of knowledge, especially by Plato and Aristotle, they played an important part in the development of philosophy. They were the first to start to question the relationship between nature and social life, a distinction that will become very important for philosophy. By questioning social laws from the standpoint of the natural order, however they understood this natural order, they relativized entrenched norms and traditions of their time. And by doing this, they in fact open up the space for later philosophers to question things like society, culture and its laws, as well as their relationship to nature. Something even their greatest critics like Plato and Aristotle would do. Thank you very much and until next time.